the framework wars, the front-end hell, or JavaScript fatigue. All these terms were coined to outline a real problem in the front-end space. There are way too many JavaScript libraries and frameworks out there, and it is harder and harder to keep up with all the moving pieces. This ever-changing ecosystem is pushing developers back to plain old vanilla JavaScript, and a lot of people are asking the legitimate question. Do we really need all these JavaScript frameworks after all? In this video, I'll argue not only that we need the frameworks, but you should also embrace the fact that JavaScript space is so alive. If you didn't rage close this video after my last statements, thank you. We'll be building together a basic app in two separate UI libraries, and we'll see how, with apparently very little effort, the small team behind SolidJS was able to come up with a more efficient, more powerful, and more fun to use alternative to React, which is, after all, what the industry accepts as the status quo and the most popular UI library at the moment. These are the stories that helped us move away from the small scripts we were running on static pages 15 years ago to powerful apps running in the browser. Without further ado, let's write some code. We'll start by building a basic React app and we'll take a look at some of the caveats and issues we will run into while working with it. Just to clarify, I'm not trying to bash React in any way, shape or form. It is a great tool and still my go-to frontend library for quite a while now. However, it is also the perfect case study to prove that even meta solutions can be improved and we need a community to always strive to do better. You just saw me setting up a basic recoil store in our project. Even if we'll do a very basic to-do app, I'm going to add in-state management and routing since these are probably the most common dependencies in any type of project. React is a UI library and doesn't come up with a state manager solution, but Recoil, which is also maintained by a Facebook team, does this job perfectly. I'm not getting into any implementation details for the state manager, so just know we defined an authenticated flag to keep track of the user status and the list of tasks we'll be able to update or access in any app component. Now, in the app.vsx file, we'll work on some of the most common scenarios. As an FYI, of course we'll use hooks and functional components, since this is the agreed version by pretty much everybody at this point. So. With hooks, we don't have a direct way to link to the component's lifecycle methods, such as the mounted event. What we can do is to define a use effect with an empty dependency array. In theory, effects with empty dependency arrays will run only once when the component is initialized. A common scenario is to force unauthenticated users to log in page before being able to access some resources. The moment we are referencing the is authenticated store value in our effect, we are forced to add it in our dependency array. Without this manual declaration, React will not be able to track the changes of the store value and rerun the effect accordingly. Having to do this is not the end of the world and you have linters reminding you to keep your dependencies array up to date, but we'll see in just a second that Solid is truly reactive and it doesn't need this manual input to figure things out. The weird part is that the linter will ask you to also put the navigate function in a dependency array even though this value shouldn't change over time. The linter will also ask you to do the same thing for the set tasks function. So you are left with three options. Add all these values in the dependency array, don't add them and live with the lint warnings, or simply disable the rule for this specific instance. All options have pros and cons, but the situation is pretty awful nevertheless. We'll quickly go over the GSX part since things are pretty straightforward. We'll just iterate over the tasks and register a non-click event. JSX was, for a while, pretty controversial outside the React ecosystem. However, because of its flexibility, it was adopted by both newer libraries such as Solid and established frameworks such as Vue. In the onClick handler function, we'll need to update a property inside the tasks array, which is a store value. This gives us the chance to look at another common but interesting scenario, mutating data. Any object stored in a recoil store is going to be read-only in order to forbid you from directly mutating data. Therefore, we need to perform the update on a clone of the object. Again, React doesn't come with any read-only solution for this, so we'll add a immutability helper library as a dependency. In the second part of this video, you'll see that, even though Solid is arguably smaller in size than React, it comes packed with both a store solution and such immutability helpers. The last thing I want to touch on here is rendering and the virtual DOM. While the virtual DOM was a default solution for DOM manipulation for quite a while now, libraries such as Solid or Svelte are proving that working directly with the DOM is more efficient. Furthermore, React has this technical thing called the rendering process, which basically means that a function component will be executed every time the state or its properties are being changed. This process is necessary in order to figure out if the DOM needs to be updated. Whenever a task status is changed, the whole app function is re-executed. While the created overhead is really not that worrisome, this behavior is showing that some of the architectural decisions inside React might be obsolete in the current day and age. It's time now to jump into a solid project and 
and see how a potential React alternative looks like. We'll start again by defining our store values. Compared to React, Solid has a ready-to-use store implementation, which follows the industry best practices and is built on top of the reactivity system that powers the whole library. So we'll define the same authenticated state and task list, and then we'll add the Solid Router library as an external dependency. With this in place, we can jump into the app.tsx file and rework the same functionality we implemented earlier. First, we'll get references to the store values and to the router, and then we'll define a side effect. Notice how similar the approach and the code is to what we did a few minutes earlier. The first visible difference here though should be the lack of a dependency array. Solid is smart enough to keep track of its reactive values, called signals, so reactivity just works. Next, if you are used to working with React, you'll know that you can't pass a sync functions to your effects, since the effect expected return is a function or undefined, while a sync functions return a promise. There is no such constraint in Solid, so we can use a sync await to clean up our code a little bit. Another nice little detail, which in all fairness is in all meta and new libraries, is access to lifecycle hooks. While not a big deal, I find it pretty useful to have a clear place to write the code that needs to run only once when the component is mounted. As I already mentioned, Solid embraces JSX and also brings in a couple of helper components to help with things such as conditional rendering or iterating and displaying lists of elements. I get that this might not be a feature for everyone, so the good news is that nothing stops you from writing pure JSX if that's your thing. These helpers are also easily replicable, so this is not really a selling point like Solid's performance or reactivity for instance. In the complete event handler function, we get the chance to look at another small but impactful solution Solid comes up with. Using the produce helper method, we can easily modify our store values and still follow the immutability principles. With this kind of small additions to the library, you are able to keep the third-party dependencies to a minimum, using a tool which is already way smaller in size compared to the majority of other frameworks. Finally, let's talk rendering, DOM updates and performance. First of all, Solid doesn't use any type of virtual DOM solution and all the UI changes are performed directly in the real DOM. Second of all, it doesn't rely on any type of rendering and diffing algorithm like React, so all the function components are executed only once. Subsequent changes are performed based on the observer pattern using signals and effects. This leads to a way cleaner implementation and to much more performant results. So, is React the most popular framework out there good enough? Yes it is. Is this a good reason to stop experimenting with different ideas and always try to improve the established solutions? I don't think so. While powerful, React doesn't really stand a chance to fight solid size, performance and reactivity at this point. Could it do it in the future? Maybe. But I don't see it happening without a major change in its architecture, which will probably cause backwards compatibility issues. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.